working now. So what we're gonna uh, do now is, is uh, do some modeling exercise with, with uh, Maxent algorithm. So what, that's the, the demo that I'm gonna present now is how to use uh, Maxent uh, in a simple way. And then you can do it yourselves uh, after the demo or uh, at your place or later on. Again, if we see the, the steps on how to model uh, species distributions, then we are in the second step, part of the second step. Uh, we already chose here the modeling algorithm that we're gonna use, which is Maxent. And then what we're gonna do is learn how to calibrate, or let's say how to set the parameters uh, of, of this particular model. If you want to see it this way also, uh, we already have the data. We already chose the algorithm, and what we're going to do now is calibrate our models in order to generate our, let's say, suitability maps or distribution maps, and so on. So uh, we're going to use the Maxent software as such, uh, and I'm going to now start, uh, stop sharing this screen, and I'm going to open the, the actual software now. Okay, so I, I hope that now you're seeing also the, the window of Maxent and um, the instructions on how to do this are also on Moodle, so you, you don't have to, to, to worry uh, about uh, taking notes or anything. If you want, of course, it's fine. But remember that here in Maxent, you have uh, space to put the species occurrences and here a space for putting the environmental variables. So it's quite easy. So you just go to browse. And then it's, uh, the window is a little bit different than, than other software, but it's, it's okay to find it. Should be fine. Let's hope so. Um, it's easier if you have everything in a folder, uh, all the data from the course. So remember that all the data that we're gonna use in this practical is, is on Moodle. There's a C, C file link there, so you can download all the, all the data. And um, so here we have to put the, the occurrence data of the species. So in this particular case, we're gonna use the same file, the same species that we used in the practical before. We're gonna use Brazilian nut this uh, tropical tree growing in the, in the Amazon and open. And if everything works fine, then you're gonna see uh, the actual scientific name here, but it's because uh, Maxent requires you certain format for, the, for the, this table with the coordinates. And it needs to follow certain logic and order. If you open the, the CSV file, so it has to be in CSV file or text file, it has to be the first column, um, the species, then the latitude, and then the longitude. So that's how uh, Maxent uh, works and how you should uh, format your data. I already formatted that way uh, for you, but it's important to keep in mind. I think in the instructions later, later on, it says exactly the format that you should have it in case you want to create uh, your, 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 your own data sets. So if everything worked fine, you should see uh, the species should appear here. And then what else are we gonna do? Is we're gonna also um, untick here the auto features, untick it, and we're only gonna select li linear and quadratic features. Uh, to, to when we're gonna interpret the models, it's relatively more easy to see, let's say, which variables are, are taking place in shaping the distributions in a more important way. Uh, what else are we gonna do? Then here, we can uh, also browse and we can go through the, through the folder where we have the environmental layers. Uh, so you, you have to select all the folder. It's not that you need to put input one by one select the folder where you have all the variables there. So if you have, for instance, something that it might be complicated, if you have one, bar, one, one 
raster in one folder or one in another one, you won't be able to upload it here. It, all the variables should be in one same folder. I have it in, in a folder here, environmental layers. Now click open. And uh, Maxent doesn't allow many formats uh, of raster files. In this case, it allows using, for instance, ASC, ASC files. And uh, so that's one, if you if were using this uh, version, or let's say this, this uh, software, uh, you can use only, for instance, ASC. But if you do it in R, you can use any, any, any uh, format that you want. And automatically here, you'll see all the variables that are in the folder. If you already know that you don't want to use one variable of this, you can just unselect it here. Oh, sorry. You can unselect it here. And automatically, it should uh, recognize whether it's continuous or not. By continuous, I mean if you have uh, land cover classes, even though it might be a number, you can choose uh, if this is categorical in case it is. In this particular case, all the variables that we're, going, we're using are continuous. Uh, remember that this naming SA Bio 1, it stands for South America, Bioclimatic Variable 1. And we're using 19 bio, bioclimatic variables in this modeling procedure, plus uh, the one soil va variable, which is the cation exchange capacity, and also some habitat heterogeneity based on uh, remote sensing data. So those are the variables that we are gonna uh, use now for our models. We want to model the distribution of this uh, Brazilian nut, Bertoletti excelsa. Then what else are we gonna do? Is uh, also uh, create response curves. We want to see graphically how uh, each variable uh, is important also, or how each variable changes uh, in different parts different, with different values. We also click make pictures of predictions because we want to see also uh, a summary of these, of these, of these uh, predictions. And then we also want to tick here the measure variable importance. Uh, what you would do here is if you exclude one variable, how much the model changes. If you uh, exclude another variable, how, how, the, how much the, the model improves or, or gets worse, let's say. So according to these sort of uh, analysis, you can see which variable are more uh, important uh, for, your, for your distributions. And then here we're gonna click the C log log output format, which is, uh, uh, it goes from a range from zero to one, as I mentioned, before, if it's zero, it's areas that have quite low or no, no suitable areas at all. And if it's closer to one, it means that it's, it's areas that have higher suitability for your species. Here we have uh, the output file type, so the raster format. We're gonna keep it as, as it is now. Then on browse, once you click here, um, you can create a folder um, where you're gonna keep your models. For instance, I'm gonna create one called Brazilian nut. I already have it, but Brazilian nut like that. And then uh, that's it. I created my folder. And then the next part before we click run is the part that is more complicated. So, so far it was just uh, checking a little bit of, of the complexity of the, uh, of the model here, sorry. Inputting our data, species data, uh, environmental data, to, to know whether we want some response curves, some predictions, and to know which uh, variable is more important. So that's relatively easy to do. And, and now there's even more uh, settings. I, I clicked that settings, but I, I believe you're not seeing it, so I'm gonna reshare now. Uh, which which screen can you see now? All, uh, like Max and two times and uh, settings two times as well, I would say. Okay, so you see this window moving now? 
yeah, yes, yes. All right, okay, so that's the setting, extra settings for the, for Maxent. Um, you don't need to understand all of these uh, settings. Random seed is just when you're gonna uh, remember that Maxent is a, um, it's a machine learning algorithm that is a, it's also a, a background, presence background uh, algorithm. So you're gonna extract random points from the environment from, in this case, South America in a random way, right? And then you're gonna um, do it perhaps many times if you do many models. So if you click random seed, it's just gonna make that this random selection of the background is gonna be the same in each model. So that's mainly what it means. Give visual warnings is quite important. If there's any coordinate that is not covered or it's out of the, of the environment, then it would gonna let you know, hey, there's one coordinate or there's some problems with this location. So it's just to give you some warnings about it. Uh, this is quite basic um, options, but for instance, ask before overwriting, if you forgot to put another name or if you forgot to put a different folder, it, it might warn you, hey, you, you, you're gonna have to override because it exists already. Uh, this other option, remove duplicate presence records is quite important and it's automatic there, so you should keep it. Uh, <clears throat> if uh, in a way to controlling for some, uh, let's say special correlation is to remove uh, points that are really close to each other. So this is a way of controlling for that. If in this case, the, the layers that we're using is at one kilometer resolution, okay? So um, one point, if one point falls, one coordinate falls in, within one pixel, and, or let's say two coordinates fall in the same pixel, it's gonna exclude uh, one of them. So you're just gonna have one um, lo location per pixel. So that's one way, that's what it means, uh, remove duplicate records. Then these other two options is uh, we're not going to use now, but is is when you're going to use these models and reproject them uh, in time if you're using climate change or if you are using other layers elsewhere in the world. So we're not going to do that now. Uh, then what else are we going to discuss now? All of the all of these settings. This part of the of Maxim settings are to validate our models. So we have um, different options of validating our data. And we're gonna discuss that probably in the afternoon today. But remember when we were discussing the Jaguar paper, um, something that I liked is that they had independent data, uh, uh, other type of data for uh, validating or evaluating their models. Here, if you have other type of data, uh, sorry, here, you can uh, browse and put uh, the coordinates of this independent data that you want to use for validating your models. So the coordinates or the locations that are not gonna be used for the models, they're not gonna use for building, training the models, but they're gonna be used for uh, evaluating or testing uh, or validating your model, okay? That's one, one part of the, of the of these settings. Then uh, one easy way of, of also evaluating the model performance is to divide your data uh, randomly in, in separate it randomly. So if you put here, for instance, 50, it means that your data that we input before is gonna be split randomly in two. And the models are gonna be created with 50% of this data and the 50% uh, uh, extra is gonna be used for validating or evaluating your model. So now we're gonna uh, choose, for instance, 25%, okay? Then these other options, um, for instance, max number of background points is uh, how many points you want to randomly put in South America for creating this background data. So often it's been, it's been uh, 10,000 points, and it's not that it has to be like that. Uh, there's many studies that have uh, assessed how much uh, your models change when, when you increase or decrease these uh, background points. But with 10,000, now it should be enough for characterizing our environment. 
and here replicates is another type of, of dividing your data for evaluation. If I put here two, then this 25% is no longer gonna be used. If I put uh, two or five or, or any replicates, is that it's gonna divide the data in n number. So if I put five, it's gonna split my data in five and it's gonna use one of these parts uh, for let's say four of these five for building the model and one for evaluating the model. And it's gonna do this iteratively five times. So it's different ways of dividing your data for, uh, for building and for uh, evaluating your models. But this is something that we're gonna go uh, deeper uh, probably in the afternoon, if not tomorrow. But we're gonna keep it like this now. We're only gonna make a simple uh, uh, division of our data and we're gonna select just 25% now. Uh, in advanced, I don't think there's much things to do. Um, let's say, these two are, if you want to, no, I think we, we don't need any of these except perhaps these append summary results in a CSV file. So you can also get all the results automatically in an Excel file. So we're gonna tick that one. I think that's also in your instructions. And then these 100, uh, 500 you see is, uh, a, a, let's say, a, this is a machine learning algorithm that does this iteratively, generates many, many, many models at the same time. And until it finds the best combination, it's gonna cut. So in the, this way, I'm saying that after 500 uh, iterations, just choose the best model. But you can put this until 1,000. Or it could be that it finds the best combination even on 100 uh, iterations. But it's up to 500 iterations. Uh, these other um, parameters, I think it's, it's not worth going through exactly. Um, perhaps this default prevalence prevalence or prevalence it means um, often it, you can also set the parameters and it goes from zero to one um, and it depends on how rare is your species perhaps so if you have a, a species that is it's uh, there's high probability of finding it's not that rare then you you can you can set uh, this this value higher and if it's more rare you can put it lower uh, a standard has been to just put 0 0.5 uh, for practical reasons but each species might have different uh, values that is better for 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 each one way of doing this not not now uh, but one, one way of, of of finding this is that you can choose different values 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and so on until one and then do the models of all of those 10 options and see which one uh, derives the better models. This can be done automatically with some R packages and in R, but in this particular part of the, of, of the course, we're not gonna do this uh, automatically. We're just gonna keep it like that, 0 0.5 for now. Then this ap apply first hold rule. Um, one of the outputs of, of of the maxim that we chose is that it's gonna create a layer that goes from zero to one, remember. And if it's closer to one, it means that areas are more uh, suitable for the species, whereas zero, it means that it's less suitable. This third score rule is gonna choose one value, let's say 0 0.7, and it's gonna make a cut. So all the areas that are lower than 0 0.7 are gonna be uh, I'm going to say that there's no species and all the areas that are higher than 0 0.7 my species is present so it's just yes or no layer so there are different rules different methods uh, to apply these, these rules uh, we're going to see this a little bit later also uh, but we're going to choose just one now to visualize in the data and then we're going to discuss which one perhaps it might be better we're gonna choose the one that says maximum uh, training sensitivity plus specificity. This name, sensitivity, specificity, 
specificity. Um, this value itself, it, it, it's, it's measuring the error of our models and we're gonna do this, uh, explain a little bit this in the afternoon. I think it disappeared. Do you see the same um, window now? Yes. All right. And then that's it. Experimental are, are a little bit, as it says, experimental things that we don't really need uh, at this point. Uh, and after we, we select all of these, you can just uh, minimize this. And then we can go, uh, we're gonna stop sharing this and go back to the main page. I think it's this one. Okay, so now we have put the basic settings and uh, this, all of these things that we do, uh, we just did, sorry, is what we call calibration or, or setting the parameters for our model. And then after that, we're just gonna click run. And if there's any warnings, uh, for instance, it says that one coordinate is missing some environmental data. So it's, it's letting you know that there's one uh, coordinate that there is no data in the environmental layer. So you just click suppress similar uh, visual warnings. And then it's gonna run the models automatically. Everything that it's doing now is doing extremely fast and it's generating, extracting all the data from the background then it's using one by one all the variables to see which one is more important. It's seen uh, automatically also um, when I'm using all the variables minus one, how much uh, that's, uh, that changes the models. And this is doing it also by each one of the variables. So uh, according to, to your computer, this might take um, longer or, or, or not, but perhaps you're not seeing the, the, the procedure, but I'm gonna reshare again. I'm gonna share this one. So it's, it's thinking, it's making all the model for each one of the variables. And um, so this might take a while. Okay, so just so that, that you know, um, depending on, on the amount of data that you're using and the resolution of your, of your environmental layers, this might take several minutes or even, even, even more hours, depending. So now it's just, uh, waiting if you have any questions at this point perhaps meanwhile the models have been created we can uh, discuss if you want but remember that this is just the demo and after this you're gonna do it yourselves and then um, we're gonna see what results you're gonna get after this this morning i i also run the model before so I have the data already. I have it from, from previous class and I use the same settings. So I think I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'll show you how the output looks. So, but, so that you know that it takes, it takes a lot of time for running these, these, these models. Okay, let me share this part of the screen. Okay, so uh, the folder that you created for the models, then in that folder, you're gonna get these uh, files, all right? And um, you have several things in that, uh, in that folder. For instance, here you have all the votes in just one table. We're gonna interpret these results uh, later today. And then you have two uh, raster layers, the ASC file, this Bertoletti Excelsa, and then you have this thresholded. So it's, it's, uh, this file is just a yes or no uh, file, a distribution, just a bit binary map. Uh, showing areas that the species is and species is not. Whereas this uh, other file is a continuous variable that goes 
each pixel goes from zero to one, what we mentioned, one closer to, closer to one, meaning the areas that are more suitable for the species. Plots here is all the, the, the predictions that we got automatically. And then uh, we're gonna go exactly through each of these uh, together, but we can see perhaps at this point, well, uh, some of, of perhaps if you're running something, you can also wait. Um, if we open this one, I guess you're not seeing that screen, but I'm gonna open it again. All right, so it should be this one. So now what you're seeing is uh, the output of the predictions of, of Maxent, where as, it, as, as I mentioned, it goes from zero to one. In this case, there's a, a spectral uh, color ramp going from, from blue to red. And what it means that areas that have uh, more red colors show locations that have higher suitability or areas that are more, more, more suitable for the species. Here, the, the white dots are the dots that were used um, for building the model. And the purple dots are the ones uh, that were separated, this 25% used not for building the models, but for evaluating the models. But this is the prediction, how, it, how, it, how our model um, looks like. And that's also that you're gonna get yourselves when you do the practical yourself. So it's just, just an example uh, on, on that, on the output of what you get with, with this Maxent algorithm. And then I'm gonna go back to the, to the folder. But you see, you have different types of, of, of graphs and graphs, and it's quite difficult to see one by one now. But if you also see that there is a HTLM file, it's a web page that is automatically created giving you all the results for you automatically. So I'm just going to open this now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this again. I'm going to share that web page. And um, okay, so now you're seeing that web page. So all of those uh, figures and graphs, this everything is um, summarized here. It's a, kind of like a model summary. And all of these graphs, uh, you don't need to focus uh, now. We're gonna discuss uh, these graphs in the afternoon, what it means, each one of these graphs. But these two graphs, just to mention at this point, we can interpret how good our models are or how, uh, how much error there is in our models. This is also some statistics uh, for, for our models that we're gonna go through in the afternoon. This is also the same picture that we saw. It's the, the visual predictions uh, uh, in areas where, where we didn't have data, we can have an idea uh, on how are the environmental conditions in those areas for our species. And this is the response curves that we saw. Uh, we ticked, remember, just linear and quadratic. So we're now only having such response uh, curves now. For instance, just seeing these variables, I see that, uh, uh, bio one, which is for instance, average temp temperature is not that good. It's not, uh, let's say it's not that sensitive for my models. In this axis, you have um, the suitability going from zero to one. And you see that it's pretty much not changing anything. Whereas other variables, you, you, they have a different behavior on which areas are more suitable for this uh, climatic variable and which areas are less suitable here it's kind of con constant. It, it's relatively, it's not that it's not important, sorry. It's, it's that it's not changing much. It's relatively homogeneous. Uh, for instance, if you see this other variable, then only at the end, you see that there's an increase in model. So this is what I mentioned about the response curves that Maxim allows. And you can see this for each variable and also what happens, this other part is once you exclude that variable, how the model changes. So it's two types of, 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 of graphs, but at this point, I'm not gonna go into detail. We're gonna go through these uh, in the afternoon also. So that's, this is nice that you get this, um, 
summary table or summary web page with all the results. And also here, uh, you can see also the importance, which of those uh, variables that we use are more important for our models. So if you just, uh, just at this point, check the first column, you see that uh, the variable bio 11 is uh, completely, um, not completely, sorry, highly important for the, for the species, whereas other variables, uh, for instance, bio one has mainly no contribution on our models. And we're also gonna see a uh, little bit more of this later on, but this is a way of also seeing which variables contribute the most to our models. So in that web page, you get a summary of, of all your, your, your models. And we're gonna interpret this, each part of this uh, um, web page in the afternoon, so no, no worries. And yeah, now, now finally the, the modeling that I was uh, running, it's, it stopped, so that's great. So just keep in mind that it might take, let's say at least 15 minutes for doing that. So that's what I wanted to, to show uh, to you. I'm gonna now stop uh, the, the recording and then I'm gonna process that and upload it to YouTube again and put it on Moodle so you can have access uh, 